Hey guys! So I am here today to do another tag video. This one I've seen kind of circulating a lot lately. This is the Reader Problems tag and this was created by Tiffany. I will link her channel down below. We will go ahead and just jump right into the questions. Question number one. You have 20,000 books on your TBR. Pretty accurate. How in the world do you decide what to read next? This is a very good question because I feel like a lot of us here on booktube, including myself, suffer from this problem. I mean, I don't think I've heard of anyone that's got literally 20,000 books, but I know what the amount of books that we all have, it feels like it. For me personally, I either do one of two things. I either pick out a random out of my TBR jar. That just kind of helps me if I just really don't know what to read. It gives me an idea and it's kind of fun. I don't know why when you pick something unexpected and I feel much more pressured to read it but most of the time I'm in like certain moods for certain books and it totally changes during whenever I'm in the mood for it. So basically if I want like a contemporary, if I want fantasy, if I want dystopian, whatever, I will just go for that kind of genre and pick a book from there. Um, sometimes I'll go on Goodreads just to see like what people are saying about books and wanting to get my own take on things, what people are currently reading and loving. That sort of thing just kind of all ties in. Number two. You're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? This is a really good question because lately, like, I know way before I even started booktube, I have this thing where even if I'm not loving a book, I feel, like, obligated to finish it and give it a fighting chance. Um, I try to do that. I'll try to make it to at least halfway. I mean, rarely do I ever put down a book because I'm not loving it. I will, um... If I get to the halfway mark and it's still not like really capturing my interest, I skim and if I see that it does get better, I'll continue reading. I know that's like bad on you because what if you're spoiling yourself, but most of the books that I end up not finishing, I've skim read the last um, bit of it and it was just books where I'm like, really? So there's just been like, I could count on one hand how many I didn't finish, so I try to finish it and give it the benefit of a doubt, but... Yeah, for the most part, I try to be committed, but there's certain books where you just have to put it down because I feel like if I pressure myself to read a book that I don't like, it puts me in a reading slump, and I hate getting in reading slumps. Question number three. The end of the year is coming, and you're so close but so far away on your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up, and how? With this one, I feel like I haven't really experienced this too much. The first time I set my goal, I set it for some like really high number, like 100 knowing I probably really wouldn't reach that, so I didn't try to when the end of the year came because I had so many books to read. I feel like if I was within like 10 books or so, I would try to catch up and hurry and make it as best I could, but if I was like so far away that I knew logically I couldn't, I would just settle with what I got. Um, last year, I feel like I did make my reading goal, I just never updated my Goodreads account for a good while, so that was really bad on me, but... I think for the most part, I definitely try to make my goal if I can. If not, I just get to where I could. Number four, the covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? I feel like a lot of us share the same feelings for this, much like my love for many books when they change covers. Exhibit A, right there. Um, it sucks. It does. I mean... People like me who have OCD like our books to match, and I hate when they come out with one theme and they change it, either because, I mean, obviously they don't match, but it's either I loved the original theme that they had and the new ones they changed it to are just not as cool, or even backwards, but mostly it's just I like my books to match, so I don't like it. Um, if they do offer the books matching, I will try to buy them matching, depending on if I really loved the book. If it was a book that was just like, okay, I really don't care that they don't match and I'll just keep them. If it's like a solid thing that I love, then I will buy covers. Number five, everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? If I read a book and I don't like it and I feel like I need to share my opinion with people, I don't go actively search for someone who didn't like the book and discuss that. Usually if I don't like a book, it's just like, okay, I didn't like a book. And then if I happen later to stumble across someone on like Goodreads or YouTube and then they mention that they didn't like the book and they state their reasons why they didn't like it, then I'll make a comment and say, oh, I didn't like it either for the same reasons or I just had the same issues with the book. And I'll just maybe make conversation that way, but I don't go actively like searching out like hate group, hate group, hate group. Number six, you're reading a book and you are about to start crying in public. How do you deal? I feel like if I get to a part and I 
think I'm gonna cry and I'm in the middle of a crowd, I would like immediately put the book down and start thinking of happy thoughts, get on my phone distracted, not looking up so I make eye contact with any of the people because I feel like strangers look at you if you start crying and they just think weird stuff or they think something tragic has happened and really you're just reading a book but this hasn't happened too much to me really to really draw on an experience but if it did happen while I was in public reading I would probably hurry and shut the book wait to read it when no one's around and like get on my phone to distract myself and hurry and switch moods so yeah number seven a sequel of a book you loved just came out but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodread, Goodreads, or Cry in Frustration? Okay, so I feel like with this, if it's a book that I haven't read in a very long time, I try to reread the books to jog my memory if I really loved them. Um, so, for example, like the Mara Dyer uh, trilogy, we have waited forever for the third book to come out. I know many people have read it. Um, me personally, I want to reread the first two just because it's been so long and I want to um, catch my brain back up. On things that have happened and I'll do that with other books if I've like loved them so much and I need to remember um, or I'll just like skim through other books or on Goodreads and just like find spoilers or something that just kind of jog my memory like oh yeah that happened and go from there number eight you do not want anyone anyone borrowing your books how do you politely tell people nope when they ask bad with loaning my books. I mean, inside I'm like cringing because if I don't know how the person is while they handle my books, I get very paranoid. Um, for like growing up, I would always lend books out to one of my best friends because she took way good care of them. If she ever read them in hardcover, she would slip the hardcover off, put it somewhere where no thing would happen to it, read the book, never creased the pages, nothing. It came back to me just as I gave it to her, so I was always willing to let her borrow books. Um, Ooh, I do have an example of one time though I've lent one out and oh. So way back, I think in high school when I read this, I loaned this book out to a friend, A Child Called It. I don't know if you can see this nice crease cover, totally bent in half because it's in her tear in the front page right there is just torn and the back it looks like someone took a big bite out of it. I can't tell if you can see like horrible condition and I gave this to her and it's practically it was practically new the spine looks like it's had better this is not focusing very well but um yeah the spine just like everything was so bad and she gives it back and she's like sorry I had this in my backpack and it got ruined I could buy you a new one I guess and it's like okay you can tell that they really don't want to buy a new one and I didn't want to be like um you're buying that because I don't know I'm just not like that but question nine reading ADD you've picked up and put down five books the last month how do you get over your reading slump I feel like I just pick up a book that I've been wanting to read usually like books that get me out of reading slumps are like contemporaries I know that sounds weird but um they're always like usually um, light-hearted and just fun and cutesy to read, nothing real in depth, and that usually gets me back into the reading world um, when I encounter a slump. Or I just pick up a book that I've heard a lot of good things about, and if I think I'm gonna like it, I'll just pick it up, and I usually do, and it gets me right out of my slump. So, yeah. Number ten. There are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? I've been trying to be really good with this. Um, if it's a book I've been dying to read or like one in a series or an author I like, I pre-order it because you can get it a little bit cheaper. Um, other than that, I just give it a while because um, my TB hair is so huge. Um, and I wait and let until I get like a coupon or something that I can spend on Book Outlet or the other websites that I monitor. And when I see it go on a good deal, I snag it up. Question 11. After you've bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? For those of you who have witnessed my TBR pile of shame, I haven't done an updated one. I want to get to that soon, but it's it's bad, guys. It's, it's pretty bad. Some books, they just end up sitting on my shelf a lot longer than others. I've had books that have sat on my shelf for over a year. Um, really, it just depends on my mood on when I want to read a book. Sometimes I'll buy a book and I read it right away. Sometimes it sits on there for a month, sometimes a few. 
Um, but typically it will sit on my shelf for a couple months because I feel more obligated or like I feel like I need to pick up the books that have sat there longer than them. It's just a weird thing of mine. Um, unless it's a book that I'm like dying to get to ASAP, then I typically read it pretty quickly within like a month or two. But yeah, I need to get better with that. I need, need to stop buying so many books, but it's, yeah. So that was the reader problems tag. I feel like these are really good questions that a lot of us struggle with. I know I do especially. Anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave me any comments down below for your answers or what your response would be to these questions. With that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!